This is hate JavaScript, tried TypeScript. So how many people have tried TypeScript? Anybody got a, okay, just a, a small handful. And that, that's kind of what I expected. So we're gonna start, you know, pretty basic. So for some of you that have used TypeScript, uh, you know, you may be uh, uh, a little bit of review to start with, and then we'll kind of get into uh, some of the, I, I wouldn't necessarily call them advanced, but we'll get into, you know, how to, how to build some, some large scale JavaScript type applications. Uh, using TypeScript. Just a real quick note about me. How many of you have ever seen me before? I've done VS Live a few times. I don't think there's any, yeah, a couple of people have, uh, have seen my talks before. But uh, I work for a company called Aspenware. We're uh, just a consulting firm. So uh, the good thing about that is I get to work with a lot of different customers and a lot of different projects. So I get to uh, use this stuff, experiment with it, and hopefully I can transfer some of the knowledge that I gain from doing that over to you uh, during this session. So that's kind of my job. I'm also a Microsoft MVP and a Telerik Insider. Now what that means is that I don't actually work for these companies, but I use their technologies and I get out and I speak and evangelize about them. So they quote unquote assign me or, or reward me with these positions. And the, the point being is that I'm out here talking to you guys, so I wanna hear feedback. If there's something that Microsoft is doing that you don't like, uh, you know, we can, uh, if you give me that feedback, I can uh, shoot it back through the channels at Microsoft and, and, uh, and, and hopefully they can get some good feedback from me because I'm out here talking to you. I mean, <laughs> we all know that Microsoft sometimes lives in their own little box <laughs> and they, they don't necessarily know what the real world is. Uh, I don't know what world they're living in, but it's, it, it's not the world that you and I live in on a day-to-day -day basis when, when we work with these tools. So, uh, so again, my job is to try to translate what you guys are going through on a day-to-day -day basis to Microsoft so that they can build better tools and make all of our lives easier. So that's all I'm gonna say about me. If you have any more questions uh, or anything, uh, just find me at the break and we can talk through some stuff. Okay, what are we gonna go through today? So we're gonna define JavaScript. A lot of people you, uh, have not seen it yet. We're gonna talk about kind of why a lot of people have negative feelings towards JavaScript. And then we're gonna talk about what TypeScript does to try to alleviate some of those uh, uh, negative feelings. And then we're gonna jump into how do we do TypeScript with ASP.NET, both uh, Windows Forms and MVC. And if we have time at the end, we'll look at how to use it with Windows 8 apps as well. So uh, let's just jump right into it. So real quick, TypeScript is a language that basically compiles to JavaScript. So if you think about C Sharp and how it works, right? C Sharp is an abstract layer on top of the ones and zeros that actually happen on the computer at the low level. And it makes it easier for you to deal with those lower level pieces of the machine. So if you think about um, you know, web coding, you know, all browsers support JavaScript in some form or fashion. Some of them maybe not necessarily the same as, as uh, many of you can attest to. But JavaScript is the lowest common denominator that will go across all the different browsers. And so TypeScript kind of extends that in a way so that we can add some nice language features that, that those of us who work with C Sharp know and love, we can add those features to TypeScript and then basically it'll spit out the JavaScript that will uh, run across those different browsers. And so we'll look at that and we'll see how that's done and, and there's, no, there's no real uh, man behind the, the, the curtain, if you will. And, the, and I don't know about you guys, but I am not a JavaScript expert. So I'm gonna admit that right now. I, I'm competent in JavaScript, I can do JavaScript, but JavaScript, as far as learning how to do large scale, you know, object-oriented JavaScript applications, that's difficult and it takes a lot of experience and, and there's a, a, a pretty large learning curve in order to get to that point. And so TypeScript uh, is, is trying to reduce that learning curve so that I can build these large scale apps and build them in a way that they can be reusable and scalable and maintainable. So we'll get into how TypeScript helps us do that here shortly. Okay, so, so again, what's, some of the issues that C Sharp developers, and again, I'm gonna take this from a C Sharp or, or VB.net uh, standpoint, but in those technologies, we're used to static typing. We're used to managed typing, right? Where I say, every time I d declare a variable, I say, this is an integer, this is a string, this is a uh, you know, person object. And then when we pass those, 
those uh, variables around, the compiler can do some checking and say, hey, you're, you're supposed to send me a person. You're sending me an animal. That's not right. I'm going to give you a compiled uh, compile time error. Or uh, I call them compile time errors, but design time errors, whatever you want to call them. I get a, an indication before I actually run the code that I did something that I wasn't supposed to that's going to break the code. Um, JavaScript is not like that. JavaScript is dynamic, so everything's just an object. And so you can pass a, uh, an animal into a variable that you're expecting a person, and it's going to work until you try to call a property on there that doesn't exist, and then it's going to blow up inside the browser. Right? That's runtime errors. So I'm going to get runtime errors if I do something like that, and we don't like runtime errors because, A, they're hard to find. I mean, there may be one little... One, one little method in there that's sending the wrong, wrong object or one little spot in there where I'm calling the wrong property and that's very hard to detect before it gets out to the customer and they start playing with it. So the idea is let's try to get some errors. Uh, the idea of TypeScript is let's try to get some error checking and some comp compilation errors before we actually get it out to the, to, the, to the live site and our customers start finding these errors. Uh, the, the other problem, and I say lack of maintainability and scalability, but uh, I, I touched on this earlier, you can do scalable, maintainable JavaScript apps. And, and I've spoken with a few of the speakers here about this just, just 30 minutes ago. You can do it, but the issue is, is it's, it's difficult. There is a learning curve. There are patterns that you have to learn uh, uh, as far as how do I build my JavaScript in a scalable, maintainable way. And when I say patterns, I mean there's not just one way to do it, right? We all know JavaScript, you know, there's, there's 450 million different libraries out there, it seems like. And wait, I think there was another one just created right there that second. So it seems like there's a new JavaScript library created every day, every two, uh, every two days. And then also the ones that are created are constantly being updated and changed. And, and, you know, some of that is good. You know, that's that agile method of thinking. But... At the same time, it can be very confusing to those of us who are used to C Sharp and used to the .NET framework giving us a majority of what we need to do our job. And then we, you know, sometimes we, we uh, you know, plug in third-party controls and extensions of that framework. But for the most part, you know, we're used to the .NET framework. We're not used to you know, choosing between jQuery or Dojo or all the different types of frameworks that are out there. We're used to Microsoft providing us with the stuff we need to do our job. And so, uh, so uh, you know, maintainable and scalable JavaScript is hard to do simply because there's just so many options, so many different ways to do it, so many patterns that you have to learn that it takes a little while to get there. So that being said, I don't want you all to go out and convert your JavaScript apps to type, TypeScript apps. If, if it's small client-side JavaScript that you're doing to you know, attach an event or manipulate a DOM object, uh, DOM element or something. You know, those are those are fine. Just continue to do those. We don't need to go and rewrite everything. But when you start doing these uh, these SPA applications, right, single page applications, there's a couple talks on on how to do that. And basically, in those applications, you're moving a lot of the the logic down to the client. And so you're looking at a lot of lines of JavaScript code. And that code, if you don't organize it correctly, is going to be very hard to maintain and, and scale. So if you're doing a small app, you know, stick with JavaScript. You can use TypeScript for that too. I don't want to say you can't, but, but for, for smaller uh, JavaScript libraries, you don't need to convert those to TypeScript. But hopefully today I can get you to start you know, new applications and new development that you're doing. Hopefully I can get you to start using TypeScript in those areas. Uh, we talked about this. It takes effort to write and learn how to write clean code. I'm not going to go into that anymore. And also, you know, client-side JavaScript development is just different than what we're used to in C Sharp, right? We're used to that code behind page, especially if you're a WinForms type developer. I'm used to, you know, having a button, and behind that button is code, and I know that code is going to run whenever somebody clicks on that button. Well, when you start doing JavaScript on the client side, now you have to start attaching to listeners and doing some of the stuff that, that .NET and ASP.NET and even ASP.NET MVC in some regards uh, takes care of for you. Right? Even in MVC, you have action links and things that know how to point back to certain controllers when buttons are clicked. In JavaScript, you know, you're, you're kind of out there on your own to try to figure some of that out. So TypeScript can help you uh, to make some of that stuff easier as well. 
So what's so cool about TypeScript? First of all, you know, and I touched on this, it compiles to JavaScript. So, I mean, it, eh, it, it, I don't know how to say this without, you know, coming across as up on my soapbox, you know, uh, preaching to, to the congregation. But JavaScript to me is kind of the, the new language that runs everywhere, right? I mean, if you think about it, even mobile phones, iPads, uh, Android tablets, every device knows how to run JavaScript in some form or fashion. So that's why, to me, JavaScript is becoming that, again, that, that least common denominator that everything is going to ride on. And, and I know I'm a C-sharp developer, it pains me to say that because I love .NET, I love C-sharp, the language features that are there are awesome. But, uh, you know, I, I think the writing's kind of on the wall that, you know, JavaScript is, is, is here to stay, it's not going anywhere. And as a developer, I think we need to, everyone should know at least some JavaScript and, and how to do JavaScript if possible. And, and some, uh, you know, something that I can say that will attest to that, how many of you guys know um, who Anders is? Anders is the father of, of .NET, basically, the father of C Sharp. He, he's the one that, that thought of it, created it, and has made it what it is today. And you'll see, I'll show you that if you've ever been out to the TypeScript site, I mean, he's one of the key, the key factors behind TypeScript. So if you think about that, what, is it, what message does that send from Microsoft if we kind of read the writing on the wall is that they've taken the guy who has developed C-sharp and moved him over to TypeScript because in, in my mind, C-sharp may have kind of run its course, right? I mean, there's so many features in C-sharp, I don't know what more they can add to C-sharp. Uh, but this TypeScript stuff, you know, they're getting him to kind of port some of the, you know, your favorite C-sharp features over to JavaScript coding so that you can do JavaScript coding in a similar way that we're used to uh, using C Sharp. So that, that to me is kind of where, you know, the, tech, the technical world is heading, you know, and that, again, that's my opinion. Uh, that's, that doesn't come from Microsoft or anybody else, but that's just me doing some uh, inference on some of the things I've seen out there in the marketplace. Now, TypeScript it does not actually enforce these rules or, or these uh, static typing in the JavaScript. So it compiles the JavaScript. So the idea is that it, it's for you to define your intent. It's not going to actually, so like, let's say, I, let's say I, I, I make a JavaScript library using TypeScript and I say that I want you to pass me a person, okay? Now, if you have your, uh, a separate JavaScript library over here that passes me an animal during runtime, I'm not going to, it's not going to, I don't know that, okay? It's not going to tell me that at, at build time that I have another JavaScript library over here that's passing me something that I'm not expecting, okay? So it's not going to enforce these rules on the JavaScript level. The idea is that it's there to, for me to define my intent so that as I'm working with TypeScript, I can define the types and the objects that I'm passing around, and then the compiler in TypeScript will tell me if I have trouble but it's not going to enforce those at runtime with the JavaScript libraries. So keep that in mind. It's not, it's not like .NET where, um, you know, if I have a third party library that's passing me something that I'm not expecting, it will tell me that at compile time. But in the TypeScript world, it will not tell, it, it does not tell you those things uh, if it's coming from a, a third party. If it's another TypeScript file, it will. And, and we'll, we'll get into that here shortly. So it's just for you to pr pr uh, provide intent. Um, and we talked about this, any browser, but I wanted to mention also any host. So how many people know of Node.js? Okay, good, everybody. Hopefully everyone's at least heard of it. And again, this goes back to what I was saying earlier. I mean, why would I want to write server-side JavaScript code when I could do it in MVC? Well, because JavaScript, you know, people are learning JavaScript, people have those skills, so why not let them write JavaScript code on the server? I mean, if you think about it, server-side code seems to be where things get the most complex. Right, this is where I define my model, I talk to databases, I do all kinds of things on the, uh, on the server side, and most of the time, at least for me anyways, I've done that using C Sharp and, you know, Entity Framework or ADO.NET or whatever it was. Now, you know, we're going to Node where, you know, Node has its own modules you can load up to talk to Mongo and to, and to create your models and do the things that you need to do server side there. So TypeScript also supports that. And you can see that if you go out to their site, there's a, 
a, a module or a, a, a snap-in that you can download and install that'll help you do TypeScript for Node. So, so again, um, you know, TypeScript is also starting to be supported in uh, other types of things. Sublime is one that I know they have a plugin for on the website, but I know WebStorm also has some TypeScript stuff uh, in it at this point. So TypeScript is here to stay. It's, it seems like it's, it's becoming um, uh, very popular out there in the world, and it's not even released yet. <laughs> I mean, if you go to the site, TypeScript is still in preview mode. Um, right now it's 0.8.3. Uh, they do have a, a 0 0.9 if you want to play around with it, but it, it takes a little bit of hacking to get that to work. But 0 0.8.3 is the latest uh, stable release, and they're working to that 1.0 release, uh, hopefully sometime uh, summer or uh, early fall. Okay, open source uh, and tooling. So if you want, and I'll show you this, but you can go out to uh, CodePlex and you can download TypeScript, the compiler, everything. So if you don't like what TypeScript is doing, you can change it just for your purposes. Or if you want to contribute, you can go and write some code to, uh, to, to share with everybody as well. And like I said, they have tooling support for a lot of the uh, open source tools as well. Statically typed, we talked about this, so I'm not going to go into that. And uh, provides encapsulation. So to me, this is where, again, the scalability thing comes into play, where I can define interfaces, classes, and modules. And uh, modules are just basically namespaces, if you will, uh, in the C-sharp world. And I can do all that using my TypeScript. Okay, so I'm going to fly through these slides. And you guys should have these slides out on the website or in your content. Um, if you don't, uh, let me know. We can get it. It's out of my blog. Or uh, I know that I'll, I'll give them the updated version, too, uh, before I leave today. But I'm going to fly through these slides so we can get into some code. But... I wanted to put this stuff in slides so we can discuss it a, a little bit formally and that you can have this for documentation later. So um, the declare keyword, basically this is, so if I wanted to use an external JavaScript framework, right, and we'll, we'll talk about this a little bit because a lot of the external frameworks actually have TypeScript definitions in place for you. And, and so what you can do with those definitions is if you reference the definitions, then you actually get IntelliSense help inside of TypeScript. So I recommend use the, use the definition file whenever it's available. But if you're using some you know, obscure third-party JS library, or if you created your own and you haven't you know, uh, created the TypeScript definitions for it yet, you can still use those libraries and, and get past the compiler. And that's kind of what this is. So basically here I'm saying um, declare var document because the, the compiler doesn't know about you know, the document object model. And so if I didn't put that declare var document in there, then I would get a compiler there uh, at document.title because it would say, I don't know what document is. You haven't defined it. I don't know what it is. This is a compilation error. So in this case, I can basically say declare var document and say, and then as document, just ignore it. Treat it as almost like a dynamic in, in C sharp, right? Treat it as something that, that uh, I don't, uh, you know, just trust me that there is a title uh, attribute on there and then I'm going to fill it up. Don't give me any compilation errors. So this is, again, great when you're working with third-party JavaScript libraries and things that you have that uh, you don't have the declarations for. So the, uh, the syntax, and this, this looks a little weird, so let's talk through it. So the syntax for actually declaring what your variables are is the colon and the type. Okay, so in C Sharp, we're used to putting the type before the variable, right? I say new. Uh, you know, what I want it to be, string, and I call the constructor. In this case, what I'm doing is we actually put the, uh, the type on the right-hand side. And there's reasons they did that. The reason they did that is they didn't want to kind of, how do I want to say, muddy the waters with regular JavaScript. Because this is how, re you know, regular JavaScript doesn't have the variables in front. So they figured if we start putting that in there, it's, it's, not, it's not really you know, JavaScript syntax anymore. So we're going to start putting the variables behind, uh, or the, the types behind the variables. So here I can say x is a number, y is a number. If I try to pass in a string, I'm going to get a compilation error. And we'll, we'll see that here shortly. Um, signature, signature functions. Um, again, so you know, this, is, this is another nice way that I can add types to my actual functions. So in this case, I'm saying, okay, I got a function for vote. I'm taking in a candidate, which I expect to be a string. So if you pass me a number, I'm going to get a compilation error. 
Um, and then I'm also expecting a callback. And that callback, uh, I'm going to send back a result of string. So, um, you know, the interesting thing down here is when I call the function to return, notice that function has a return value of, uh, I mean, a, a parameter of uh, string that it's passing into that parameter. So, you know, there, there's a bunch of, different, uh, bunch of different ways you can do things with function signatures um, that make things easier. Also notice they kind of brought over this, this lambda type uh, uh, syntax, which again is, is basically a way to write inline functions is basically what, what this is. So in this case, we're saying, we're, you know, we're expecting a function of any. So, you know, you could put something in line there if you wanted, but, but notice when we pass it in, we actually pass in the function that will go into that callback variable. So if I passed in a function that did not have that result string in the constructor, I'd get a compilation error. So again, this is just a nice way for us to kind of define our intent. This is what we intend the code to do. Um, so give us some compilation errors if we mess that up in any way. Uh, interfaces. So now you can define your interface. So here I'm saying I got an interface of friend. And then notice down there, I don't even have to really have a, the, the interesting thing about interfaces is that, you know, all objects in JavaScript are any, you know, in, in reality. So in this case, I don't really have to have a instance, a, con a concrete instance of that interface. I can just say, I'm expecting a friend, and I expect friend to have name and favorite color. So if you pass me any object that has name and favorite color on it as, a, uh, as properties, it's going to work. Um, you don't necessarily have to uh, extend or implement uh, my interface of friend. So that's a little bit different from normal C-sharp coding, right? Normal C-sharp coding, I can't really pass in, um, you know, just a, a, a generic object and assume that it's an interface. It has to inherit or uh, implement that interface. So it's a little bit different, but, but the, the, the idea here, and JavaScript kind of has this thing, if it, you know, if it walks like a duck, if it quacks like a duck, it is a duck. So in this case, we're saying if it has a name and it has a, a favorite color, then it is a friend. And I don't care what, what the actual object name is or any of that kind of stuff or whether it actually implemented my interface. If it has those properties, I'm going to assume that it's what I, what I want and I'm not going to give a compilation error. Question, yes? Why is there a yeah, so the question is, what is this question mark? And it's same as, uh, it, it, it's kind of the same notation as you get in, uh, in C Sharp with nullable. Right? So in this case, I've got a favorite color with a question mark, and that means that it doesn't necessarily have to be there. It's optional. Does that make sense? So if you look here, like when I pass in my friend, I'm setting the name friend.name, but I'm not doing anything with favorite color. So it's, it's nullable. Does that make sense? It's just like the, the, the C-sharp nullable. Yes? Um, yes. Absolutely. So it's not no value, but it may not exist. Yeah, it may not exist at all, which in, in JavaScript is kind of the same thing, right? It's undefined, if you will, right? So when you, when you hover on it, you know, on, on, on it, so like if I, if I looked at this friend that I'm passing in and I tried to get to favorite color, it could be undefined or it could be filled with blue. I, I really don't know. So it's one of those things that it is. It's optional and nullable. It's kind of a weird uh, term for JavaScript because they're kind of the same thing. Nullable is undefined. Yes? Would it throw a compilation error if you passed in something with a favorite color that was not a string? The question is, will it, uh, will it throw a compilation error if I passed in a favorite color that is not a string? No. And I, yes. In an object that had a favorite, favorite color, color that is, it, it, <laughs> that's a good question. So let me give you two answers. So. If it's a TypeScript object that you're passing in and you've defined favorite color as a number, then yes, you will get a compilation error. But if it's just a JavaScript, if it's just a JavaScript object that you're throwing in there that doesn't have the intent defined for it by TypeScript, then I don't know. It's just an any and it will work in that case. So again, it's a little, I mean, this, this treads on, on some kind of uh, some shallow water uh, on some of these things as far as will you get a, a compilation error or not. And a lot of it kind of depends on if you've taken the time to actually define your intent, then yes, you will. If you haven't, it just defaults to any and it lets it go.
Any other questions? Those are great questions. Stop me anytime if you have any questions. We'll, we'll, we'll see some of this in action here shortly. So the other thing that you can do is you can define a class, which in this case is a bank account. And notice it also has a constructor. So again, you can do all this stuff using what's called the module pattern in JavaScript. You can do a lot of this stuff, and we'll see it here in a minute. Um, but you can do all this stuff, but you kind of have to know the syntax and how to do it in JavaScript. In this case, it makes it very easy, especially for those of us who are familiar with C Sharp. Okay, this is, you know, I have a constructor, I have a method deposit that takes in a credit and a, a number. Down here, I'm extending that for my checking account object. And I'm, I'm, this one has its own constructor, but it's basically just calling the, the super. So instead of base, we use super in this case to call back to the constructor of the, uh, of the class that I extended. And then down here, I add a method that says write check, and I'm going to actually debit. So if you look at the top one, I can make a deposit. If you look at when I extend it with the bottom one, I can uh, actually do a withdrawal or a, or a debit in that case. So again, this is ways that you can create base objects and share them throughout your code, uh, which, you know, again, you can do that in JavaScript. It just takes a little more effort. And this, to me, is just a, it's a little bit easier for me to, to understand this coming from the C Sharp world. Modules. So modules are namespaces. So here, not only can I, uh, I can create a namespace or a module called M, uh, but notice here I have var s equals hello. And notice I'm not doing an export on that one. So that is equivalent to a private variable. So now I can have private variables. I can have private functions. The only thing that I, that, that I can't, that I, you know, this export is exporting function f. So again, if you look at my code down here at the bottom, if I call f, I'm fine. If I try to access s, I get a compilation error because that is a private variable. If I want somebody to be able to fill that, I need to uh, mark it as export in order to do that. So again, just some, some nice syntax uh, stuff that, you know, stuff we've had for years in uh, C Sharp, but now you can start using some of this in uh, JavaScript. One thing I always like to add, I think that's it, yeah, so we'll get into the demo, but before we get there, one thing I like to add is how many are familiar with ECMA standards and the W3C stuff? So, so basically, HTML5 and CSS3 and all this stuff, there, it has to go through a standards committee. And so Microsoft and Google and all these different corporations have people that just sit there and look through these standards and make recommendations and try to decide what the actual specs for HTML5, CSS3 uh, in this case is what we're on now, and, Java, and ECMAScript. So ECMAScript is this, JavaScript is an implementation of ECMAScript. For those of you who are old dinosaurs like me, you remember VBScript. VBScript was also a... Uh, a type of ECMAScript, or it apply, or it um, it applied the ECMAScript standards. But VBScript went away. JavaScript's the only one that's around right now that I know of, anyways. Uh, that's you know mainstream. So right now, ECMAScript is on ECMAScript five. So that's what you have in your browsers now, and they're working on the standards for six. And so ECMAScript six is supposed to have a lot of the stuff that I just showed you in there, a lot of the classes and things like that. So so TypeScript. Again, to me, this is another value of TypeScript, right? You could sit here and you could try to guess what ECMA 6 is going to look like if you wanted. And you could try to write your JavaScript to that. First of all, there's no browsers out there that support it now. So you're, you're, you're not going to be able to run it anywhere, even if you did do that. Uh, but secondly, why not let Microsoft worry about that? Why not build your code on TypeScript and then Microsoft is committed to making TypeScript compile to the ECMA standards? So when ECMA 6 does get approved and come out, then the compiler will take care of, you know, doing whatever it needs to do with those keywords that we just talked about and making sure they're compliant with the new browsers as well as the old. So, um, you know, that's, that, to me that's another huge benefit of TypeScript is I don't have, I don't know about you, but I don't have time to keep up with all the changes that happen with JavaScript and everything that's going on. So why not let Microsoft do that? That's their job. Let's let them take care of that. And I'll use what they, what they spit out, and, uh, and that way I don't have to worry about it. I can be more productive. Okay, let's take a look at TypeScript. I just want to show you a few things here, a couple things. Um, first of all, let's see if I'm getting any kind of, oh, shoot, it doesn't look like I'm getting any kind of good connectivity here. Okay, well, we'll just, uh, I don't know that we need it. Anyways, um, 
But anyway, so this is the typescriptlang.org website. So I already have this pulled up. So if you notice above the top, there's a learn, there's a play, get it, run it, join it. So, um, uh, and I'll just talk you through real quick. So learn is if you want to go get the actual specs, you can do that. Play is really cool because they have an in-browser compiler. So a lot of times what I've done is, um, you know, you can go out and if you have a real quick, you know, you just want to see how, you want to, how something is done in JavaScript, you can go out here, you can type it in real quick, and it'll show you the JavaScript right next to it. Cut out the JavaScript, paste it into your JS file, and go. So if you don't want to like, you know, fully implement uh, TypeScript in your projects, you can just uh, you know, real quickly move over to, uh, uh, to, to this site, write it, and then just copy over the JavaScript that it generates, and then you don't have any quote unquote TypeScript in your, in your code. So, so that's one way you can do it. Um, Get it is where you go get the plugin. So if you want to start using TypeScript now, go to Get it, and there's a little installer for installing this with Visual Studio 2012. Right now, it only works with Visual Studio 2012. How many people are using Visual Studio 2012? Okay, a majority of you. Good, good. If you're not, you, you know, I know it's hard, corporations, whatever, but but 2012 is completely backward compatible. Has anyone had any trouble with opening a 2010 project in 2012 and having it work? And yeah, it, it, it works pretty well at this point. As far as you could go to 2012, somebody else can be using 2010, and, you, and everything will work uh, and, and work together just fine. Um, so that's how you get it. Uh, from get it, you can also get the Sublime uh, plugin. You can get Node.js modules, all the stuff that you need to do uh, TypeScript at that point. Um, I'm not really sure what's under run it other than I think that might be the samples that I'm going to show you here in a minute, but I think you can get all the samples that I'm going to show you, you can view them online and, and play around with them. Uh, but I actually downloaded them and put them into a solution so that I could actually get in and see the code and break points and do all the, the stuff that, uh, that you like to do uh, if you're a developer. So, so let's take a look at that. So here's the, the sample solution. And let me pull this and then I'm just going to real quick. So these I pulled, if you go, if you go out there to the CodePlex site, there is a samples directory that has a whole bunch of samples of how to use TypeScript with different things. Um, so it, as far as just doing a basic demo, I wanted to show you guys this real quick so that, uh, so that we can kind of get an idea before we start going through a, a kind of a real world solution. So, so I'm gonna, um, and then I created kind of a home thing. So I'm just gonna, first thing I wanna do actually is let's go into the simple and just take a look at kind of how Visual Studio works with TypeScript. So I've installed the plugin for TypeScript on Visual Studio 2012, which gives me kind of the compilation that it does. And then also what you need to do with that is go get Web Essentials. How many people have Web Essentials already? A few of you. If you don't, that is an awesome sub tools. It's, if you, um, in order to get Web Essentials, you come in here to uh, Tools, or where is it? Tools. Uh, manage extensions and updates, I believe. And then here's the ones that I have installed. And I've got the developer tools, but then this one right here, Web Essentials 2012. Uh, this is by uh, Mads Christensen. He's kind of the, the uh, ASP.NET guru, but install that thing. Not only, even if you're not using TypeScript, if you're doing any kind of web development, install that. It has all kinds of great JavaScript uh, um, uh, enhancements, if you will, for writing JavaScript in Visual Studio. It also has the, uh, some awesome CSS3 capabilities as well, as far as it'll tell you what browser is compatible with the tag that you're, or the CSS that you're using. And also it does some cool things with color palettes and, and different things. So um, even if you're not gonna do TypeScript, I would install that thing for sure. Um, but in this case, I have installed that and I'll show you what that gives me here. Uh, in a second. So let's open this guy and let's bump up the font here. Let's do it here as well. Oh, it's not going to do that one. So they don't have that integrated yet, but let me just show you what we got here. So, um, so basically I have a class called animal with a constructor that just basically takes a name and then it does a move. And then down here I have a snake which extends animal. And so in the constructor, or I, I actually didn't pass anything into the constructor here. Uh, but here, you know, my move actually um, fires an alert that says slithering. Um, and then I, I pass some stuff to the super if I need to. And then I also have an animal. 
And then down here, I have, you know, here's where I'm actually passing things in the constructor. So here's my new snake. I'm passing in Sam the Python. So that's going to get associated with the name. And then I'm also uh, creating a, an animal. I'm calling it a horse, you know, new horse. And uh, I'm passing in Tommy. And then here I'm saying Sam.move, Tom.move. So, so if we look over here, and I'll have to, uh, I'll have to just uh, zoom in on this so that we can see it. This is the JavaScript. So it shows you the JavaScript that you're, that you're printing out the same time as it shows you the code that you're writing. So every time, and so the, the compilation actually occurs when I do a save. So I can make changes, and then once I hit save, that's where I'm gonna know if those changes actually um, are going to take or if there's any kind of compilation errors. So let's break this, if I can. If I can get back to normal life, there we go. So let's break this by, um, let's, what if I change this class from a snake to a lizard? Okay, notice down here, okay, now I get little red squigglies that tell me, hey, snake does not exist. So either, it, you know, and let's say I define snake in another TS file somewhere else. Well, I could add that reference to the top of this similar to you would do a using in C sharp, and then it would pick up that I have a snake somewhere else, and that squiggly would go away. But now if I save this, so, so you'll see I get compilation errors, you know, as I'm typing as far as in this, this particular box over here. But if I try to save this, then I get a, a, a nasty, well, not nasty, but I get a, an error message on this side that says, you know, gives me the, the, the line of code and everything that just happened and tells me that snake does not exist. So again, in this case, this seems really stupid because it's just such a small little piece of, of, of TypeScript. But imagine you get, you, you know, you get in these large scale uh, models where you have tons and tons of classes and, and they're inheriting from each other and you're trying to share that base code. Stuff like this becomes very, very helpful and useful um, as, you, as, you, as your uh, TypeScript libraries grow. So that's, uh, so that's one thing that, that makes it easy. And then you know, if, I, if I change this to lizard, then you know, all, is, all is well again. So again, pretty, pretty simple stuff. If I hit save, it should regenerate all the TypeScript, and I can see that over there. So again, this is what Web Essentials gives you is this extra little pain here. And if you don't like it, you know, you, if you don't care, you can just move that over. And now you just see your code. If you want to get it back, you can do this and you can see your code. But I don't know about you, but this over here is a lot more readable than this over here. And granted, there's white space and stuff that I put in there. But, but this stuff, you know, lizard.prototype.move, I mean, what, what is that? If you're a C-sharp developer, you know, what, is, what does that mean? Why is it doing it that way? You know, those are questions that I would have if I was coming from C Sharp and did not know JavaScript. So, I mean, if you think about it, this over here is C Sharp, and it just, it, it makes sense. This is how I would build it. But if you're, if you're not familiar with JavaScript and you look at this, you know, it takes a lot of thought and maybe even some research to figure out how to do just the simple stuff in JavaScript and do it effectively. So, um, you know, this is kind of the basics and helps you to do a lot of uh, basic stuff. But let's look at some of these that are a little bit larger. Oh, the other thing I wanted to show you, let me, um, let me zoom in on this. So over here, notice I have this animals.ts file, and then right under that are the JS files. So in this case, if I wanted to use animal in my, uh, in my HTML pages or my SPX pages or whatever, I would just add a, a script reference to the top to that JS file, and I'd be good to go. Yes, question. Right, so the question is how do I, okay, I have everything in one file here. What if I need another TS file or another JavaScript file, right? And, and that's, a, that's a, a good question. So let's see if we can find one here. I'm almost positive there's some over here. Let's go to the jQuery one. So if I look in, let's go into this guy. And I wonder if I, hold on a second, let me just, I usually just scroll in, but, uh, but in this case, it may be easier for me to, bump up my fonts and maybe it will just work. Let's see if it does both panes. There we go, much better. Okay, so, so in this case, notice up here, I'm referencing the jQuery.d.ts. So let's talk about that for a minute. 
The .d is a definition file. And right now, there's no real easy way to create definition files other than you just kind of hand, hand jam it. So somebody has gone out and there's a, I wish I had internet, I'd take you there. I know the, the link is on my references or my resources slide at the end, but there is a project in GitHub where there's you know, hundreds and hundreds of type definitions for TypeScript that have been already created for these libraries like jQuery and certain things. So if you notice up here, I'm referencing jQuery.d.ts. So if we go over, not the Team Explorer, there we go. If we go over to jQuery.d.ts, see, so somebody, see, so this is typing for jQuery 1.7.x. So this is a little bit outdated. But notice somebody's gone in here and actually created all the TypeScript stuff that you need to do JavaScript development in TypeScript. So, so now over here, when I say I'm referencing jQuery.d.ts, <clears throat> when I come down here to this dollar sign, notice I'm not getting a squiggly. It knows what the dollar sign is because of the jQuery definitions that I'm referencing. So in your case, like if I had my own, let's say I, had, I, I could also drop another TS file on here. So let's say I, I create two TS files. One of them has all of my classes for my uh, people, and the other one has all of my classes for my orders. Right, you can link those together by just dragging, dropping the TS file to that, that location at the top, and then all your, all your IntelliSense, everything will come together. And you can use either or in both places. So it's, it's very similar. I mean, even though it doesn't look like it, it's very similar to you know, a usings. So instead of having a bunch of usings at the top, you're now going to have these refer reference paths to your other TS files. And again, like I was saying, you can also reference, uh, you know, JS files. So if you, if you have a bunch of libraries right now that you want to use and they're all just JavaScript libraries, then, uh, you know, you have to do that declare. So you say, you know, declare var my library. And then every time you use my library, it'll ignore that as far as compilation goes. So hopefully that makes sense. Any other questions along that route? Okay. So if we look at this one, um, you know, notice this one has a few more lines of code and it's making, you know, it's using jQuery to, you know, do some, do some manipulation to, um, you know, what's going on in the DOM and finding things. So again, you can use your jQuery just like you, uh, just like you would in any other uh, part of your application and use these type definitions to, to, uh, to show how, how that works. And then, you know, again, it creates all this this gobbledygook over here that I'm not real familiar with um, for you. So, um, and again, then in your, in your project, instead of referencing the TS file, you can either reference the, um, the, the .js or the min.js, depending on if you're doing debugging or not. So it automatically minifies uh, this stuff for you as well. And if you want, you can tie it into the bundling with ASP.NET so that it all goes into one file as well. Question in the back. Right, so the question is, does Microsoft have a plan for maintaining the definition files? And that's a good question. I, I don't know. I would assume that they'll probably ship with uh, whatever version of jQuery and a few of the, the ones that, I mean, in my mind anyways, Microsoft has already kind of decided that they're going to support everything that comes like in the MVC, new MVC project. I got to assume that they're going to support those types of things out of the box because they're already... They're already doing that anyways in their other tools. So it's a good question. I can't say for sure, but that would be my guess. Question. When you're running the debug, you want to debug the, are you debugging the left side or the right side? You will debug the JavaScript side. That's a very good question. So there is not debugging set in, in TypeScript yet. Uh, and I got to think of it. You can? I have not. I tried it in the Windows 8 machine, and uh, it didn't work, so I just assumed that it did not work here either. Gotcha. So the, uh, so the question was, can you debug through your TypeScript? And my answer is I haven't been able to get it to work. Uh, but this gentleman over here says that it is possible and that if you're using a browser, you said, with source mapping, is Chrome, do you know does I, which version of IE do source mapping? I don't know, but Chrome and Firefox. 
So Chrome and Firefox, he says, will do uh, TypeScript, but we'll test it. I mean, we'll, that's kind of what I'm, that's, that, that's why I want to run through some of this because I think it's a, I'm going to be honest, my demos are, are rough and, and they're rough for a certain reason because I want you guys to see how TypeScript can help you with compilers, help you find issues and help you be more productive than just running it and seeing if it works. So, uh, so we'll, we'll get into those demos in a minute, but I just wanted to show you some of the stuff that you can do uh, with, yeah, see, so I do have a, looks like I do have a breakpoint set there. Well, no, why did it stop there? That's interesting. Let's F5 and see if it comes up. So this is all built with TypeScript, so this is basically just Battleship. So I can move my ships around, and then I can start firing, and he'll start firing at me. And it's basically just a battleship game. So if we go and we look at the, um, uh, let's do the F12 developer tools uh, for, um, for IE, and we come in here and we look at our warships.js, um, notice this is all, uh, you know, this is all just JavaScript. So I'm actually pointing to the warships.js, and notice I didn't have to say, you know, .ts slash .js. You just point to the JS file, and, uh, and it knows how to get to the JavaScript. So, so here's the JavaScript that it's running there. So it would be interesting to see if we can, uh, if we can get the, the debugging to work. So if we go over here to my samples and to the warships. Okay, in, in IE? No, in, in the Studio. Okay. Yeah, well, well, let's, okay, we'll take that offline. That's, it's good, though. So there's a, there's a setting that you have to set in order to get the debugging to work. You need to enable generation of source map. Mm-hmm, gotcha. And then make sure the server that serves, serves that map file. Uh-huh, gotcha. Ah, uh, okay, I gotcha. So it sounds like that's why I haven't been able to get my debugging to work, because there's a few, uh, a little configuration that needs to be done. Hopefully they'll fix that all uh, by the time they get to 1.0. And maybe we won't have to go through all that uh, that hassle, but if you look over here at my my warships, so here's my here's my warship.js that I'm uh, that I'm actually using. So if we were to pull this guy up, you know, you'll see that this this JavaScript over here is what actually got served up, and this is what it looks like. Um, you know, again, this is a lot of it's a lot of coding, a lot of classes, and a lot of a lot of uh, maintainable code that you, you know, that you'd have to know a lot about JavaScript in order to build it and make it look nice and use the proper uh, design patterns to get it to work like this over here, okay? So I'm not going to go into it. That's kind of the basics. Uh, what I'd like to do now, we've got about, I don't know, I want to end, we've got about 15 minutes, so I want to just kind of run through a quick demo <clears throat> um, to kind of show you how to convert or use, you know, your current uh, JavaScript files uh, into TypeScript. So does anybody else have any questions or? Okay. All right. So that's the samples one. So let's go to, and I was going to show you this, but I don't know if it'll work. So, oh, it does go. So has, have you guys seen the movie Office Space before? I know you guys can't hear this, but this is, uh, this is the TPS report. So basically he didn't fill out his TPS report using the new form. So his boss and then, uh, well, so his five managers that he reports to and his boss are going to come ask him why he didn't use the TPS report. And the reason this is important is because that is the demo that I'm going to do. So we're going to, I built a MVC real quick website that helps you fill out your TPS report. <laughs> and the reason I did that is because in a tech, you'd be surprised. If you ever do, if any of you are speakers or if you ever want to do demos, there is tons and tons of wealth of knowledge out there about the corporation in a tech. I mean, people just build demo content and sample content for this fictional company that you can use, you know, uh, you know, commercial free without the rights to it. So, uh, so like Bill Lumberg has a Twitter account, and if you, if you follow him, he will actually tell you to fill out your TPS report correctly, and every now and then he'll ask you to come in and work on Saturday. It's, it's, really, it's, it's really kind of fun to get into it all. So that's how I got into this Inatech. Um, whoops. That's how I got into the, the Inatech stuff. So, Inatech. So basically, I'm just going to run this now. 
So what we're going to do is we are going to convert this. Um, and, and the way I built this, and it's not really that important, but I'm, I'm using Kendo UI for, to do some MVVM uh, model binding. So I actually have some, uh, well, I shouldn't say some. I have one model that I created to handle my TPS report values. And then I have a view model that handles the saving and retrieving of those values. So again, I just have a quick index, and then I, I just have a quick page here. Um, you know, where I can fill out one of these. Uh, I don't have a lot of, uh, you know, I don't have any validations or anything. I can hit create. I can say okay, and then if we go back, you'll see that hopefully, no, I got to do a refresh. Hopefully that will show up. So Ben VS Live shows up down there. So, um, so the pretty basic, just a quick little, uh, quick little website to fill that out. And um, if we go over here, the, the only thing I really want to show you, again, if we do the F12 developer tools, is that um, right now the scripts that I'm using are down here. So I've got a, a TPS cover sheet and a TPS cover sheet VM. And so those are the two, those are the two uh, JavaScript libraries that I'm maintaining for this application. So let's go convert those to TypeScript. So let's close this down. And let's go into my scripts, and here's my model. Um, and I'll pull this up, nothing real fancy, but notice I don't know that I, I mean, I, I built this before TypeScript was out. I was coming from C Sharp. I'm not a JavaScript expert, so this is probably not the best way to write a model. So what I'd like to do is see if, uh, I mean, I, I could rewrite it from scratch. For this, for this exercise, we're just going to uh, convert it real quickly. So here I'm going to add, and then notice I have TypeScript file here, um, and that's just because I've been adding a lot of TypeScript files lately. But if I come over here and I, and I type in TypeScript here and what to add, there's this TypeScript file item template now, and that's what you get when you install the plugin for, uh, for Visual Studio. So we'll just call this uh, TPS cover sheet uh, TS for TypeScript. Just so we give it a new name, so because we need to make sure that we point it to the new newly generated JavaScript once we're done. And so now I hit add, and notice out of the box it gives me a, a template that I can use and just has some of the stuff uh, in there for us. Um, that can get annoying after a while, but right now it's in beta, so there's not really a, a good way to get to fix that. So I'm going to get rid of that. Which notice when I got rid of that, all of a sudden I got a compilation error, which again is nice. So I'm going to go ahead, though, and, and just get rid of that. I'm not doing anything with that right now. And we'll call this um, TPS Models. And we'll create a class. We'll call it TPS Cover Sheet. And right now, we're not doing any interfaces or anything like that. So now I've kind of, uh, you know, just by doing that in itself, I've kind of, you know, created a nice little encapsulation for my models so that I have my own namespace and everything's kind of good to go. And then notice this hasn't changed over here, so if I do a save, that's when we'll do the recompilation and uh, you know create this, this over here. So again, being a C-sharp person, this makes a lot more sense than this. And that's just how I am. If you're a JavaScript person, you'd probably dis disagree, but that's, uh, that's how, I, how I operate. So um, now what I'd like to do is pull, this, pull these guys out because these are all my properties for my cover sheet. So I'm just going to quickly pull those out, paste them over here. I'm going to use the handy Alt key to highlight all the selfs. And that's pretty much all I have to do. So now this is, this is set up. I've got properties. If I hit Save, you'll see you know, it created all those for me in JavaScript. And that's really all it took for me to kind of you know, make this, uh, to encapsulate this a little bit and make it a little more uh, readable uh, to, a, to an average C-sharp developer. So that one's pretty easy. So that, that one's no problem. But let's go to the view model here, and let's do that one. This one's a little bit more, a little bit more involved because it's got a few more things. So um, first thing, let's just create the, the TS file, and then I'll show you what it looks like. So here's my TypeScript file, um, TPS, cover sheet, VM, TS. Okay, again, it gives me all this stuff. So in this case, I don't need this stuff. So we'll delete that. 
Delete that. Delete that. I like to just kind of get it set up. And actually, I don't need this either. I'm just going to get I'm just going to get rid of that right now, real quick, because I'll show you why in a second. So now uh, we'll call this TPS view models. And so if we look at what I'm doing, and this is where things, again, I'm not sure if I did this exactly right when I was doing it the first time, is that I'm basically using this, this kendo.observable. And this is the thing that allows kendo to do some of the two-way binding that it needs to do uh, for the MVVM portion of the, excuse me, of the, uh, of the app. So basically, I just want to take this entire thing. I still need a TPS cover sheet VM, and I still need it to be a kendo observable collection. So I'm just going to take all of this code, oh, excuse me, and paste it over into, into here. And then notice now I'm getting quite a few compilation problems. So first thing I need to do is I have to set this to a var in order for that to work. But then also I want to make sure that this is, again, we talked about private versus public variables. So I want to make sure that this is uh, exported as well so that anybody can, uh, can use it out there in the world. Now, this goes back to the gentleman's question of how do I link to a TypeScript file that I already, that I, that I have created. And it's just as simple as coming over here. Here's my model. I can take the, the TPS cover sheet TS and just drop it right on there. So now I've linked to that, but notice I still have this little squiggly here. And that's because I did give it a namespace. So I got to say tps.models. And then notice here when I say dot, oh, if I didn't do a dot, it would have worked. Um, so notice, first of all, the squiggly goes away, but notice if I was coding from scratch, I could say dot, and there is some nice little IntelliSense for me as well. So it knows what models I have in that namespace, what's being exported, and what I can use, and it can give me some of that syntax at, uh, at um, design time or code time, compile time, whatever you want to call it. So that got rid of that squiggly. So now I still have a squiggly for Kendo, so how do you guys think I get rid of that? There, there, there's a couple ways that I could get rid of that. First thing I could do is I could go see if Kendo has any .d uh, files, some TypeScript definitions out there, and I could move those into my project and reference those. And that would give me all the IntelliSense that comes along with that. And that would be the best option. Uh, but I don't, right now at least, and I, I know that they announced they were going to start shipping the TypeScript definitions with Kendo UI with the, with the next version but I don't know if those are out yet and I haven't had time to look. So, so right now I don't have the definitions. So, but I still want it to generate, like if I try to save this right now, you know, I'm not gonna get any JavaScript. So I have to find a way, it doesn't know about Kendo and it doesn't know about jQuery. So the other thing with jQuery, I do have the .ds, so I could move those in. We're not gonna do that right now, but I could use the .ds if I wanted to, but what I could do is what they call that am ambulant, uh, uh, definitions here. And so that's how I'm going to handle this for now. So I'm just going to do declare kendo as that. Basically this is just telling the compiler, whoops, car. Basically this is just telling the compiler to ignore those particular values. Just assume that those are good, make them dynamic, and, and, and we're good to go. So now I've converted this over. I don't have any red squiggly, so that's good. So if I do a save all, now I've got my, uh, my JavaScript created over here. So again, it doesn't take that long. The other thing that I wanted to show you too is that type, so TypeScript is JavaScript. So I didn't necessarily have to do this. If I wanted to, I could have just taken the JavaScript right out, pasted it into a TS file, and it would have generated the same code that I just did. But you know, if you get, if you get to a point where you know, your, your TypeScript and your JavaScript, it's hard to manage which ones you're doing in TypeScript, which one you're doing in JavaScript, just move your, just move all your, just rename all your .js files to .ts files, and it will work. And then at that point, you can start converting and organizing uh, your your .ts files uh, using the the syntax of TypeScript. Okay, so now if we look over here, we've got all of our we've got all of our TypeScript. Um, you know, not only do we have our .ts files, we've got our .js files and our .js min files. Okay, so that's all good. Now, the problem is, well, not the problem, but the, the next step that we have to do, whoops, is, I didn't want to F5 it. I hit the wrong button. Let's just turn that off. 
Okay, so the next thing we have to do is point. So right now, all of our references to our JavaScript files are pointing to the one without the TS on the back. So that's just pointing to this TPS cover sheet vm.js. So what we need to do is repoint those guys down here in our views to use our new scripts. So here, if I come down into my TPS cover sheet, and here's the Kendo one, if I open this up, Notice, so right here it's going to scripts, model, TPS, cover sheet. What? Okay. <laughs> Visual Studio. What can you say? So now I can change these to use the .ts files. That's all I really have to do. And now it'll start using those, uh, those files instead of my original JavaScript files. Now, there's one other thing I need to do. Can anybody, this is, this is so obscure, I'm sure you guys, because this has to do with Kendo. So with Kendo, you have to call the, the method to do the data binding uh, when the uh, page starts. So if we go down to the bottom of the page here where my script is, notice I'm doing a kendo.bind, and I'm going to TPS cover sheet VM. What's going to happen there? Can anybody tell me? What's that? Yeah, no, it's not going to, it's good, that's a good, good uh, answer. It's going to use the old one. But no, because if we're in here, we're in object mode, right? So we're in object mode. So remember what I did with my object is I, I sub uh, categorized it now into a namespace. So in this particular case, I don't have the namespace in here correctly. So what I need to do is I need to say TPS view models dot. And look, there's my. There's my TPS cover sheet VM, so I know I'm good there. So again, the namespaces help you as well with, uh, you know, with IntelliSense, uh, no matter where you're doing your scripts. So good, uh, good coding practices. And again, you can do all that with JavaScript if you wanted, but I, you know, I just uh, I don't have the time to learn that right now. I'd rather do, uh, do it using TypeScript and, and the way that I'm used to. So I think uh, let's just give it a shot and see what happens here. Uh, you know what I may need to do is uh, I may need to do a I may need to clear my cache just so if I go over here I'm going to go ahead and do a uh, Control F5 to clear my cache and force it to download all the the new files and so there's a couple ways we can check this first thing we can do is if I do a, a view source and we go down in here and we look at our um, oops we look at our Scripts. I'm definitely pulling the .ts ones. Okay, so we know we know we're good there. And then if I did a uh, if I did an F12, and we look at the scripts that I have, and we hit the drop down here. Notice here's my my ts files. So if we wanted to, uh, well, I'm already attached to a debugger, so it won't let me debug here. But we could you know debug here with the developer tools just like you normally do um, into the JavaScript. Um, sounds like you could do TypeScript debugging too, um, with a few com with a little configuration. So I'll have to look into that. So now let's just see if it works, though. That's the big test. Let's do Ven VS Live two. There we go. Cover sheet saved. And then if I go back over here and F five again. I need to have it do that automatically. There's my, my VS Live 2. So, so again, we converted to TypeScript, and, and again, just feels, as far as the browser is concerned, it's just JavaScript, same as, same as before. But in this case, I let the, you know, the experts at Microsoft figure out how to write that JavaScript instead of writing it myself. And, and I use TypeScript, which you know, makes more sense to the C Sharp developer. Any questions? Any comments? Yeah, so the question is, is how, how would I do, you know, browser um, detection and those types of things with TypeScript? And the answer is TypeScript's not going to handle that for you, so you would still have to do that. But, you know, again, TypeScript is JavaScript, so you could either do it, uh, you know, using, uh, you know, a, a JS file, or you could use uh, TypeScript and just type it into your TS file. Either, either way it would work. But, yeah, that code... Um, you know, would convert over, and there's there's a few libraries out there that kind of do some of that for you, 
and you could still use those absolutely by just referencing them and, and calling them. So yeah, any library, I want to be clear, any JS library that's out there will plug right into here. Uh, it's just JavaScript. So you can call, again, you may have to do that declare var uh, your library name in order to get the compiler to understand, uh, to ignore those particular values. But uh, other than that, it should bring it through. Question way in the back. Yeah, so are there any, so the question is, are there any issues with or, or annoyances with deployment as far as putting this out on the server? And, you know, that's a good question. Basically, if you're using, you know, what comes out of the box with MVC and how it bundles and those types of things, then, and if you're familiar with that, then you can add the bundling stuff and, yeah, it's, it's not a problem. And you should be doing that anyways. So, like, when I, when I build in release mode, it's going to automatically bundle all my, it's going to minify all my files, it's going to bundle them all together into one file and serve that up to the, to the web server anyway. So, I haven't seen any. Um, we've deployed a, a couple sites with bits and pieces of TypeScript, and I have not seen any major hiccups with that. So, very good question. Thanks, Brian. Anybody else? Yes. Yeah, so that's what I was going to get into next. So we still have, we've got just a few minutes. So any other questions about the web stuff before I go into the Windows 8 stuff? Okay. Um, so the Windows 8 stuff, let, let's, just, uh, let's just fire up another browser here. And I don't want to rush, so I'm going to talk through some of it um, because I don't know if I'll be able to show you all of it. But I'll tell you right now that, you know, Web Essentials and, and, and TypeScript right now is very tightly targeted towards web applications. So the, the plugin that you get from the site is not going to uh, plug into HTML, uh, HTML Windows Store apps right now out of the box. The, it will compile it for you, but you don't get all the nice uh, stuff that you get uh, in the web version. And I think that's because a lot of the stuff that you get in the web version comes from Web Essentials, which has a much quicker release cycle than the rest of the world. So let's go to Windows Store and, oh, actually I gotta go down to JavaScript Windows Store, of course. And we'll just do this. So I just wanna show you how you can. So, so basically the way this works, and it's kind of a hack, is you add a .js file and then you just change the name to .ts and it'll automatically do all the stuff that, that you expect it would do for a .ts file. So if I, go, um, if I go over here to the JS and I say, you know, add new item and I try to type in, you know, TypeScript, it's not going to show up. So, so basically what you need is you need a JavaScript file. Uh, so let's do this and we'll just call it uh, test.ts, right? So I can say that here when I'm creating it. Just rename the extension to TS instead of JS and say add, and then notice I, I said .ts, but it automatically create, it are, it's already doing, you know, uh, the, the same thing that the web version was doing, except for, again, you're not getting the, you're not getting the files included over here. So if you look over here, notice in the web, they were sub files, right? So you could tell pretty easily that they were generated from the TS. Over here, it just places it in line with the TS file. Uh, but it, but you know it will do it will do the same it will do the same stuff. So you know if we create um, you know class test and uh, whoops you know and just add some stuff to here var test one string. Um, I don't know why that is not working. Let's just try this. I just want to see if it'll if it'll compile. So if I hit save, yeah. So there it, you know. So it, it does, you know, it does work. It's just a little bit, it's not quite as nice. Um, but you still get the, the JavaScript right next to each other, everything like that. The only difference is that the files are not subfiled over in the Solution Explorer. So um, yeah, by all means, you can use this to build your Windows 8 uh, JavaScript apps as well. Um, honestly, I found the, the Windows 8 version. I tried to use this in a project that I did, and it was a little buggy. 
So what I ended up doing is just using um, the website or something else to actually type in my TypeScript and then just take that JavaScript and, and copied it over. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's, and that's not a bad way to go for anything. Like I said, I, I just need the skeleton. So once, it, you know, once you get TypeScript to spit out the JavaScript, at that point you can kind of understand and you can probably modify it somewhat yourself as far as adding properties and methods and stuff. You can start doing that to the JavaScript at that point because you can just cut and paste what TypeScript did and, and paste it down below and then rename and, and recode at that point, refactor. So not the most productive way to do it, but it does get the job done. And for me anyways, it was uh, a little bit easier than you know, just rewriting my JavaScript from scratch. Okay, let me just do the slides real quick. I know we're getting close to, uh, close to lunch, so let's just wrap up so you guys can be the first in line. Okay, JavaScript. So, I mean, just to recap what we've gone through. So, why is TypeScript even here? Well, it's because JavaScript, like it or not, I, you know, I've argued till my, I'm blue in the face uh, with JavaScript developers that, you know, it, it's, it's just as good as C Sharp. In my mind, I don't think it is. So TypeScript is, is kind of there to, to help C-sharp developers make the transition over to JavaScript and also just make us more productive. I mean, it's, it's, just, uh, it's just extra syntax, extra language features on top of JavaScript. And, and if you think about it, you know, the way that the standards committees work and how slow they move, you know, getting new things into the JavaScript language are, is very difficult because by the time they approve it and say, yes, this is the standard, well, then the browsers have to implement it. And then you have to, all your users have to upgrade their browser to, you know, IE 12 or whatever it is before you can start using those and that new syntax. And then you have to do, like this gentleman said, then you have to say, all right, are they IE 12 or IE 10 and point them in different directions? You know, forget that. Let's just, <laughs> let's just use TypeScript. It's going to compile to the, the least common denominator. And let's, let's let Microsoft handle those situations for us. So that's kind of the first two bullets. Um, last bullet is, you know, there's, there is nice uh, plugin support, even open source support for TypeScript in Visual Studio, other plugins, and, uh, and a lot of uh, open source areas as well. And again, um, if, if you look at my resources, where is, darn it, I don't, have it on there. I got to I'll add the uh, I'll add the link to the uh, to the GitHub page with all the definitions. But if you just go out and and search for you know type TypeScript definition files, you'll find a, a link to that site. And there's there's uh, quite a few uh, type declaration files already created for you that you can start using and getting all the IntelliSense and everything else that comes along with uh, with using TypeScript. All right, that's all I have. Any other questions? All right, if you have any questions, come up and see me. Fill out your evals. I'd really appreciate it, and thanks for coming.